Stampscaping 101, we're going to do another experiment here with some birch trees, but this time I'm going to be using a photo print of some clouds. You can download these um, free on my Flickr account. I'll put a link to it on uh, in the description area. But photos of clouds, I mean, if you have a colored printer, you can easily just go out with your phone and take pictures of uh, different clouds. Uh, different types of sky features, sunsets, sunrises, things like that. Um, I guess with something like this, you can even have objects in here, um, the way that we're going to do this. Using opacity with some bleed proof white and the um, acrylic paint pens, but um, usually sky figures are things that uh, people use in uh, traditionally in photo stamping, meaning um, stamping directly on photos like this, but this time we're going to be employing some vellum, and uh, we'll see what this looks like. Um, I don't know. You Working with transparencies, it's, it's something that's fairly new to me, <laughs> and I, I don't know, just some different notions of a uh, I don't know, applications are coming to mind as I as I do more of these, um, and I just want to uh, experiment a little bit and test it out. Okay, now the piece of paper that I'm using is a five by seven Canson, fifty pound vellum here. Um, I would imagine uh, you can use whatever brand you want. As far as ink goes, I do think that the ink is going to make a difference uh, with a lot of people's um, brands of uh, paper, uh, vellum in that some people are telling me it doesn't dry very well for them. And uh, I haven't had any problem with the can uh, cans on, but, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on vellum by any means, so... Um, I'm not sure what to tell people in terms of what's best or what may not work or not. Okay. All right. Now I'm working on a, a larger piece here. This is a this is a four by six um, print, and this is a five by seven um, piece of vellum that I've trimmed down from you know a larger sheet. They come in tablets of different sizes. And um, I'm just working larger because it's just going to be easy for me to sp um, spray mount this and then just to glue it onto uh, the piece of vellum here. So I, I don't want to go with a 4x6 and then have to match it up perfectly with this. 
So have like one or the other, I think, larger than the other size. Now, as, as far as photo prints go, I got mine at Costco, so um, the four by sixes are just by far the cheapest way to go with those. So that being said, I would probably go with a larger piece of vellum um, as opposed to a larger photo print. But it's all up to you. If you have a like a home printer, you can print whatever size you want. Okay, now this is a, a brilliance, going back to um, media compatibility. The brilliance is a fast drying pigment ink. And one of the things about vellum is that imagery, from what I'm finding, typically stamps out lighter than your typical cardstock. Okay, so I don't know. Like I said, I, there might be some different types of uh, inks that'll work really well. I haven't tried things like um, like a Stazon or something like that, like a solvent ink on vellum. I would I would have to think that would dry just fine. It just it's just a matter of um, how dark uh, something like a solvent ink would look on vellum. It, it, I, I would imagine it would look just fine. Now, I don't know if some... Now, like a VersaFine Clear would probably stamp out the darkest, but I'm just not sure if it'll dry or not. I, I just need to do some overall um, experimentation. But for things like these videos, too, um, like a VersaFine Clear, the oil-based pigment inks, it just seems like it would take long, a lot longer for it to dry on something like a vellum than a, a Brilliance, which I can heat set in you know a couple seconds. Okay, so we have some birch trees like that, and this is going to be glued on top of this paper like that. Now it already looks kind of cool, though, doesn't it? So I'll have to position this somewhere, wherever you know, it will end up going. Right. Okay, but let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and ink this up. Okay, let's so let's heat set this. It doesn't need to be heat set long. Again, uh... The brilliant sinks are meant to dry very quickly. One of the things I really enjoy doing from a technique standpoint is this. Uh, bleed proof white. It really, I don't know, for some reason there's something really fun about just painting these trees in. Okay, now I flip this over and I'm going to be painting it from the back of the vellum, okay? So this is the front side, or that's where the trees are stamped at least, and this is the back side. I get, you know, you could um, have this be the back if you want to, but uh, it just depends on which way you mount it. Okay, now here is some bleed proof white being applied. You want it um, kind of the consistency of like a uh, like a thin to thick syrup or something of that sort. Okay. as I turn the paper in the direction that make, you know, is the most conducive for you know, a very easy application of this. If I keep it like this the whole time, I don't know, I can't see what I'm doing, my hands like in the way. So now when I want to get on the other side of this tree, you know, I'm just going to turn it this way. Here's one of the nice things about working on vellum. See, I'm not painting directly over the top of that brilliant sink that I applied because the brilliant sinks on the other side of the vellum. Um, bleed proof light dries about as fast as anything that you'll ever use. It's almost like using um, white out. You know how fast white out dries. Bleed proof light is probably like some kind of 
there's probably some kind of common component in um, something like a liquid, you know, like a liquid paper. Do they even make liquid paper anymore? They just call it whiteout now or something. Correctional fluid. Okay. All right, three down. It almost starts drying on your, your paintbrush uh, pretty fast too as you do this. Um, this type of paint's pretty great though. You can, you know, I, I just leave this sitting around sometimes after I do these scenes because I could just go right into editing these videos, but um, the fluid, the, the paint really goes back into solution easy. So sometimes it's, you know, like paintbrushes, like rock hard after, but I just put it in water for a few seconds and uh, it really starts to dissolve it and then you can kind of just paint around with it and that um, paint just goes right back into solution. You can clean your brush very easy. Right. I really need to do a uh, Halloween scene with these birch trees, with that white kind of bark glowing against uh, you know, the moonlight or something would be pretty cool, I think, especially on this vellum like this with this technique here. Now, do you, everyone know why I'm painting the back side of these birch trees, you know? the Doing the front side um, used to be a matter of the, you know, the retention of white against kind of darker backgrounds or dark, you know, objects in the background used to entail the masking of the birch trees to stamp something behind them, right? If you're only working on one side of paper, it's either that or, um, you just had to avoid them somehow. Well, usually the masking would be the easiest way, but this is a way that where there's no masking involved, and you're really, you know, making use of both sides of the vellum so that you can get, you know, these white trees like this. But also, see, I have a lot of detail in these birch trees like that, so that's why you can't just paint over the front side of it, you know. So see that against that? Um, photo like that. I mean, I'm not sandwiched it up exactly because there's a little bit of wet paint on this still, but that's what makes this so much fun. And um, it's dynamic in terms of um, the process goes, you know, being able to use those kind of, it's kind of multi-dimensional. Um, there's not not a lot of dimension, you know, because it's a very thin piece of vellum, but the fact that you can use both sides, it's, it's really incredible to me. That's all it really takes like that. Well, let's take a look and see what this would look like over, you know, a um, dark piece of paper like that. Look at those trees. All right, now this is looking um, fairly stiff to me because we have three and three like that. And they're all vertical. It's like columns and a Roman columns in a courtyard or something like that. So we'll put um, some additional trees in the background here. But let's get some of this... Um, foliage laid down first. 
Maybe I should do some like hanging branch in there or something like that sometime. I have this hanging branch that we can come in, come across in here, and um, you know that might be kind of interesting. Or maybe we'll do that on the front side of this. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to um, look like background foliage because I'm putting this on the back side of this, so it's going to be in back of the um, the trunks here. Okay. And these are three millimeter um, acrylic paint pens, so they're they're pretty opaque, um, you know, on the uh, on the opacity scale. Sometimes um, things that we would think would be pretty opaque are really a lot more um, transparent. Okay, now when we lay this down, just to try to keep it fairly natural looking. So what that means is you just kind of cluster these little dots together in some areas. Okay, but I'm going but leave a little bit of space in, okay? You can get pretty loose with it because we're going to be adding on more layers, okay? So this is what we're going to see um, from the front side, okay? So you watch that right there. <laughs> this paint it leaves a uh, some pretty thick little um, applications. Now I'm going to want to show a lot of yellow in here, so I'm leaving some space in between. Now you can start with yellow, you can start with green, whatever colors you're, you're going to be working with. So there's no kind of set formula, formula that you have to kind of abide by. It's whatever kind of, uh, maybe what, whatever dominant uh, color you want. Um, to see. But you can change it in the end, too, because you can still add foliage right on the front of this, too. So if the dominant color is green here, and then I put some yellow behind it, the green is still going to be showing, right? Because you're seeing it from the back side of, you know, your application, um, application process. See, what I'm doing is I'm kind of laying down a lot of these little leaves on these little branches that are sticking out in here. You don't have to. You can put it really wherever you want it to go. But again, um, yeah, you can lay down these dots on the front or back. And see, you can just put it right over these trunks right here. You don't have to avoid them because trunks are pretty opaque, you know. Bleed proof white is very opaque and um, you know, you can be pretty haphazard about it, okay? And it's all good, as they say. Make the, uh, the foliage a little bit denser in some areas, some areas a little bit sparse. But again, this is just the first color, so. And remember, uh, too, we're not going, you know, this whole thing is not going to be in here, so I don't have, need to finish it completely, especially around the perimeter. Um, that's not going to be visible. <laughs> when you start doing this, you really, it's really fun. It, I think it looks really cool. So it's going to be tough to, to lose, you know, several, uh, whatever square inches of this one, I think. See this? I'm coming in for the top. There's like some kind of hanging foliage. We can imagine this tree is, you know, continuing up and there's that, uh, um, canopy of, uh, you know, branches and everything like that. All right, that is the green here. Be before I started this video, I really shook up these pens, which you really want to do quite thoroughly um, before you start using them. That mixes up the uh, 
the paint and the uh, water quite thoroughly and uh, it'll give you the thickest paint to apply to your your piece now, I guess I there could be some instances where you want a thinner uh, paint sometime you know maybe it's a little bit more translucent so you can see the background or you want kind of a more mellow version of paint to come out kind of a watered down version of whatever color you're working with maybe you don't want something so you know super bright or something like that you want it muted and maybe more aged looking you know in that instance then don't shake them up as much it'll be more um, kind of a watery um, type of look and see this I'm kind of largely going or I am going in the same areas that I used my green you know you don't have to it could be kind of isolated you know applications of just this is kind of a dull yellow right here So just kind of make it nice and easy for yourself. Notice how, um, you know, a lot of it is, I'm just have this one hand that's doing a lot of the work, just staying stationary, but I'm moving my paper around my vellum. like if you're using scissors or something like that too you you know you do a lot of turning with your off hand all right see that nice canopy of foliage and this is what it looks like on the front side you can see the trunks are really intact now what I do is I come in with some foliage over the front of this too so it's not just so stark but look at that that background foliage isn't interfering with the white trunks at all and that's where this really comes into play you don't have to mask off these trunks to get background foliage or what we'll be doing uh, we want background um, imagery um, you won't need to for, you know mask off your foreground for background imagery which we normally have to do all right this is like a canary yellow this really kind of brightens things up I think I'll be using most of this um, yellow on the front side though I like to kind of go kind of dark and then build up light usually but some of this can be in the back of the foliage as well or back of the trunks but if there's any of this foliage that you want to be in front of our background trees then add this in first okay so my background trees will be somewhere in here It's kind of expressionistic or something like that using these uh, big paint globs like you know like so I'm gonna put some of these uh, little paint um, marks down on the floor like um, some some of these leaves have uh, fallen I just about said blossoms some of the leaves have fallen okay this is what it looks like looks pretty crazy here I'll give you a close-up view of these here okay 
And again, this is what it looks like on the front, or from the front. See that? All these, all of my imagery is standing out um, forward of all that foliage. So you can see those dark you know, branches are in there. I want those branches to be sandwiched in between foliage, though, you know, within the leaves. So that's why we add the, uh, some of that paint over the top of the front of this later. So it makes it very dynamic uh, in terms of the surface that we're using. But yeah, I, I don't think I've used orange. Let's, let's use a little bit of orange in here, too. Okay. I'll just kind of add a little bit of a hint of some color, you know, where there's a little bit of space in between the uh, um, the paint. I've built up some paint pretty thick here right now. Okay, so you can see that orange very distinctly. Oops, very distinctly right here, right? But again, in the front, it's just kind of peeking through some areas. So that comes to show you how opaque, you know, those um, acrylic dots are. Okay, I just put some paint on that. Let's flip this over here. have this different size you can use the same um, birch trees you can go like some background ones like this too I find these kind of flared ones a little bit and that these are smaller too kind of a little bit more complementary all right I'm gonna go like that okay so I'm going to be kind of trying to get some of this in between some of these other ones and I'm gonna have this come out here into this opening a little bit. It just depends what, you know, which way we want it to go. Let's see, like that, or like that. Yeah, either way. I'll do it on this side. Yeah, I'll come over here. So let's see, I'll, let me kind of position this like this. So I have to kind of keep in mind that, you know, where those trunks are, but this is just like a little, design detail, you know, one or the other, you know, isn't good or bad or better or worse, you know, or anything like that. Just, it's kind of just one, it's just options, okay? Okay, so, going with the brilliance, and we're going to stamp this now. These trees are going to be on the back side of the vellum, okay? So that we have these trees are still nice and opaque. And we're going to do this, right? And I'm stamping these higher up on the composition, okay? Because higher up on the composition will represent something that's farther back in the distance, okay? I'm using a little bit more pressure because, you know, there's a lot of paint built up on here, you know, with the, uh, the bleed proof white and stuff. I mean, it's not a really super thick layer or anything, but it is still dimensional. Okay. All right. So we get that. And it looks like that. See those trees? <laughs> Let's look at this, you know, with the, the, uh, The vellum, it cracks me up, you know, that we can do that. And, let's see, remember, it's going to overlay photo like that. God, it looks really good. Um, so far. <laughs> All right. OK, 
Okay, now we have these trunks in here. Now we want these ones to be opaque as well because we're going to be putting it over the top of this photo. Okay, well, I don't know which way is up and which way is down. We'll figure that out when we get to it, but see like that. So those trunks, you know, we need to paint them in, right? Okay. Or maybe it's going to go like this, I don't know. I'm still going to do a, you know, kind of a forest floor type of thing down here, so we'll probably do that with some colored pencils. All right, so let's get back to our... Yeah, see, my paintbrush is, like, hardened. It dries really fast, so I'm going to go and rinse this off of the sink and to loosen up my bristles again. All right, paintbrush is ready to go. Let's take a look at this out of curiosity over the top of black paper, too. Pretty interesting. Um, this all gets, uh, the vellum also gets more transparent when I, when it's, it gets sandwiched um, in the spray sealing process. Fill that. I'm adding a little bit more, you know, because my paintbrush is kind of filled with water. Right? You know, I didn't rinse it out or dry it out completely, but so I'm just taking my time to get a good um, amount of the uh, the bleed proof white in the uh, in the paintbrush, as opposed to kind of having a watery version of it. Yeah, it's still a little bit watery. I should have dried out my uh, brush a little bit more. Yeah, let's go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's good. Let me just go right over um, some of those leaves that you've created with the pens. You don't need to worry about it because the um, the trunks are going to be in back of these, so we have a bunch of the uh, paint right in here, right? See right in here? But you just go right over it, and that acrylic is still down underneath there, but that's what we're going to be viewing from the front of the vellum, so you don't need to worry about it. You can just go over anything with this, anything and everything. Here's this trunk coming out this way. Here's going right up here. And here's the um, fourth one right down here, okay? See it going right across that. We don't need to paint this part because it'll be in back of the, uh, the front tree. Can you see this right here? You just go right in here. See how it's at an angle, too, from the other trees? So that's why I went with this kind of flared. I had it. I was tempted to put another one right in here, but since we're going to be sandwiching it over the photo print, I figured, oh, okay, let's not fill this up so much where we can, you know, can barely see um, the photo. Not that the photo has to be, you know, kind of a more significant player, but this is our experiment, so, you know, we want it to show through somewhat. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. This is looking at those leaves. God, that is really so much fun to do, to layer that, those birch trees like that. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Over the top of that photo like that. Eh, can't get over um, kind of this uh, process and how much fun it can be. Okay, so now we've laid down some other birch trees in here. And 
what I'll do is I'll add some additional foliage, okay? So the foliage that we've laid down after our initial impressions are now sandwiched in between those front birch trees and the back birch trees, okay? Now what you can do is you can come in if you want to and you can add in additional foliage into the piece, but they will be now in back of our more distant trees, get it? So that, I don't know, that's, that's one of those things that are it's kind of funky to kind of think about. It's like you're, it's like, um, in terms of layering our imagery into our scenes, it's like compositional chess, you know, I suppose the checkers or something like that. Bad analogy, but, um, you know, we're thinking about it or being able to employ certain things in multiple dimensions. I don't know if we can do it in, you know, unlimited dimensions because at some point in time you're not going to be able to see, you know, if we use multiple layers of uh, um, vellum against one another. What I'm getting at is that, you know, one of these days I'm going to sandwich um, vellum together, so I'll use multiple pieces of vellum and spray mount them together, you know, where we can really kind of play around with, you know, d multi multiple dimensions, maybe, I don't know, three or four. Here we're playing around with, we have the front and we have two layers in the back, so we're already playing around with like three layers. And I, I, I feel that yeah, I kind of have to think about it, though, in terms of, uh, you know, this concept. It's not hard in terms of application, though, but it's just kind of considering, you know, <laughs> one extra thing. Then if you go two layers, it's layer, you know, kind of thinking about two layers of, uh, you know, dimension. But see that right now? See how dense that looks right there? In terms of... Um, all of the different layers uh, that we're working in, and it was pretty easy to do. You know, you stamp out, stamp, paint, and texture, okay? And then you can put it on again in the back. Stamp, paint, uh, you know, stamp, texture, <laughs> kind of describing it's harder than, you know, the actual application of it. These are getting, they're getting easier for me to do, too, um, as I do these, okay? All right, that is what that's going to look like over the top of that photo. That. Uh, I'm trying to think of another process. I'm thinking about adding in my little gear into this scene. We can go really small. That. I'm thinking about the smaller version of the deer that I just used, though. Uh, the smaller version of this one. You can use a horseback rider, too. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Having her in the background would be pretty cool. I'm not going to do that, though, because it um, she might block out the, uh, the photo. Not that that would be bad, you know, we kind of, you can do whatever you want. You play around with the uh, things that, I can put this deer in back of that foliage, too. Like, right in there. Or it can be in front of the foliage. Hmm. Alright, let's, let's play around with this. 
I'm going to try to stamp this deer right in there, but it's going to be behind that foliage, okay? It, you, that is just something that you just cannot do, you know, without something like this, this vellum here. I don't think. Well, I don't, I, I guess you could, because you can just, if this is on the front side of paper, then let me see. Then you're sticking it in front of your painting right up. I'm not, I'm not sure what, um, these paint pens are pretty opaque, but if you, if we put them right over black, sometimes you can see that black showing through, but I don't think we'll be able to do it, show it through here. I, I don't know. Here, let's just stamp this out and see. Okay, so again, this is on the back of the vellum and over the top of these paint pens, which will in turn be under them when we look at it from the front side, All right? Okay, hey, that's, that gave me a really good impression. I was kind of holding it longer because, you know, these paint pen, you know, it is raised a little bit. You ever do embossing where you can see that kind of black or whatever you're embossing, what color, color you're embossing turns colors. You can kind of see it turn colors um, when you're heat, uh, heat, uh, heating this up. Okay, so that's what that looks like right there. So he's kind of more distant, see that? And then I'll put in some additional foliage right in front of it. On the front side of this, okay. I'm trying to decide on where this is going to go uh, with this photo. I think right, right in here. I think I'm going to have the white down here at the clouds so they can do some forest floor types of uh, effects in here. All right. So um, it's always one of those things where I'm trying to decide of when I should spray seal this, okay, and when I should start putting in some additional. Um, tones and textures and things like that, um, like with colored pencils, which I'll start using. But I guess we can do it either way. I can do it, put in the colored pencil now or later. Okay, but here's where you gotta start deciding. Um, I wish I had a bigger photo now. I hate to lose any of this. I really like what's going on here. Okay, so now's the time to really start deciding if you want some additional um, imagery stamped in here because once you lay down the colored pencil, it, just any type of ink just doesn't stamp over wax very well. So um, now's the time to do that. I don't think I'm going to add any more. Let's just keep this you know, fairly simple. I'm going to start adding down some um, different values of brown. Oh, this is Tuscan red. I thought I was saying, why is that so red? Here's some browns and some greens. You can go with whatever colors you want, though. Um, I'm just grabbing my, these are Prisma colors. I recommend, you know, you don't have to grab, you know, 20 different values and tones of all your pens that, uh, colors that you're going to be working in, but I, I do recommend you know, grabbing some out, and then, so you can see them, make things visual for yourself. As, you know, if you're a colored pencilist and you're using these things all the time, you don't need to do that because you know what you have, and you know it, you know, you're reaching for a color that you know you want to use. I'm not, you know. I just started using my very old set of colored pencils that I've had sitting around for years. So I... You know, I make it visual. That's what I used to teach people in my classes. I'd say, okay, grab out your range, full range of green tones. And I would, you know, I traveled with about where everyone had a set of about, I don't know what it was. I think it was 
16 colors of pads. So out of that 16 colors of pads, they grabbed the ones that they were going to be using on their scene or kind of in theory. Okay, so if they're doing a, a blue tone one, they would grab the three colors, uh, values of blue that I, that I had, you know, light, medium, and dark. Okay, so this is some brown in here. You notice I'm not going too dark with it because I have other values of it too that I'm going to be using, all right? So it's just kind of a very light shade of it. Okay, now we'll go, this is a, a darker brown, but again, I'll just use um, a lighter value of it. So in other words, with colored pencils, you're just not pressing very hard with it, okay? You can always go darker if you want to, but once you lay down a color, you know, it's going to be harder to remove it. You can remove colors, but, or applications of color. But here's where I'm going, and I'm giving a little bit more dimension, or a lot more dimension, to my trees, okay? So see, I'm going to have my lighting coming from in here, so I'm going to darken the right side of these trunks here. This is just kind of like a dark brown. You can do it with black or whatever. Um, but for the most part, I'll darken in. The right side of the trunks on the right side of the scene, okay? And on the left side of the scene, I'll darken the left side of the trunks. I often do kind of centralized lighting in my pieces. You know, you could do it where the light is coming from all over here and you darken in, you know, all the trunks on the, you know, one side or the other. And maybe I should do that just for variation sometime. Okay, now some of these trunks too, there's a canopy of leaves, so it stands to reason that there's shadows kind of, you know, here and there on these trees. So kind of, you know, darken them in someplace, you know. Like in the whole top, or you know, like I'm doing here on some of them. Have a little bit darker in some areas. Just, you know, you kind of oscillate it so they're not just all uniform. Uniform in terms of uh, lighting, okay? What that means, too, or can mean, in terms of your application, of media, it takes all the need for kind of tedium out of it for you, you know, and having to be really careful and specific. It's kind of a purposeful um, irregular <laughs> application of something though, okay? So this where some trunks are a little bit darker in some areas. You see this? You, you just kind of put it wherever. So you don't need to be super smooth about anything. I think it looks better to have it a little bit, or a lot, irregular, okay? Because there's a lot of, can't, you know, there's a lot of light in here. There's a lot of light, so there, you're creating a lot of shadow, but in no means do you have to be super, um, I don't know, particular about the placement of it. Get irregular about it, okay? And that will make your piece kind of more natural looking, okay? So for some of you, that might be harder. It's like, oh my gosh, I, you know, it's, it's kind of harder to be random than particular, like if you have kind of a an outline style of... Um, application of form G, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to stay right within these lines, I know exactly where to go. It's, you can think about it that way too, but you can think about it like, you can do it in, you know, particular ways, but then just don't do as much, okay? 
you can think of it that way. But see here are all these white trunks. They're still white, but they're they're more mottled now. See that? Doesn't look like lighting is hitting it. You know, like I said, there's no right or wrong here. I'm going to put a shadow on this one right here, right here, and here, 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 whatever. Okay, well, look at that. But doesn't that kind of make those the white areas of it stand out more? And again, it's going to be against this. So look at that. If you want to, see I'm working on just a, over a white piece of paper right here. If you want to be able to see the shadows more, then work over kind of a, a dark piece here. Let's take some black and develop some of the shadows on some of these. See how I'm kind of darkening some, you know, like I said, on these this side, maybe I'll darken in um, for the most part the right side of these trunks like this. You don't have to stay right on the line or anything like that. Okay. Now in this lighter area down here. I haven't started using black yet, but I mean uh, greens, you know, for the floor down here, but see this right here? Now with the black, what I'm doing is I'm doing it very lightly, then I use it lighter as I move away from it. But remember, this, this photo is going to be like in here, so I don't need to develop this whole thing very much. Although I'm really tempted to and just mount this on white paper because I really like this right here, but I do change up a lot of times in my videos and say, okay, I'm, we're not, you know, my initial intention you know, the final result, something took a big turn, and I'm using it on some, you know, I, I'm removing something, you know, that was one of the initial intentions, but on this one, let's, let's do, test out that photo. Okay, here's some green, okay. I do largely want this area in here to be kind of light, I think. So, I'll just, you know, come into that a little bit. This is kind of my darker green. We could, we, you know, in past videos I might have worked light to dark, but, I mean, you can, you can, here, here's a, a lighter green. I'm just using some very light values of all of these different colors that I'm working in. So this right here, you know, and some of them I'm coming up in my tree, too. You know, it's like reflected colored light, there's all this color from, you know, all the leaves around there. I'm going right over some of these leaves that have fallen. Remember I did a couple of those little yellow dots on the, uh, the forest floor before. I'm finishing off a lot of this. This isn't even going to show though. Coming up in some of my trunks with this green. Just like some light is reflecting off of it in some areas, you know, the uh, on white bark. Okay, and let's see. Here's kind of an olive green. I like blending in a lot of different values and whatever shades and tints of uh, whatever hue that I happen to be using. I think it makes it just a, a richer looking surface that way and uh, color scheme. If you only have green and a black, that'll do. You know, just try with that. Get different values of it by using much lighter versions and then using much darker versions. Okay, so at the base of these trees, I tend to create shadows with them like that. So I'm using um, kind of a heavier application of the colored pencil in those areas, okay? I 
like that. And doesn't it seem like those trees are kind of sitting in the scene a lot more when you do it that way? Isn't it? At the base of the uh, deer, casting a shadow. Every time I start doing this type of thing, I, I get a little bit more comfortable um, the more I work with these, you know, so I'm kind of adding things a little bit faster. You know. I'm not a colored pencilist, you know, painter, anything. I don't use these things very often, so when I end up using it, I, you know, it's kind of a matter of getting used to it a little bit each time, because I'm not... I'm not practiced at it, you know, very much. And what kind of usage I've done, you've seen if you're kind of a viewer of this channel. Okay, now, adding this in here like this, it occurs to me, maybe I should have added some texture in here, but I don't want to add the texture on the front here because it has all that wax in there. So let's go with some of this sedge filler and let's just add this right in here like this okay and let's take a let's look at well let me see if the heat set that a little bit Okay, let's take a look here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's a little bit more textured down here. You see that? Okay, let me go check the time. I have to go pick up my son from school in a bit. Okay, it's still early. I lose track of time uh, when I'm doing, uh, when I'm stamping. I don't know if uh, half hours pass by or if it's a Two hours, three three hours sometimes. Okay, here's a little bit of this rocky, uh, tiny rocks stamp. And again, this is all on the back. <laughs> this, yeah. this surface is very malleable. Okay, there's certain things that you can't do with certain processes. Um, if you're working on just, if you're only working on one side of the paper, I don't see that vellum as being like a superior paper to just, you know, standard cardstock or something like this. But you can utilize, you know, whatever certain qualities of whatever surface you're using in conjunction with the media. <laughs> But it is pretty dynamic. It's not going to be, you know, a replacement for me for other media. Um, you know, I like playing around with it all, but... Okay, so here is that. that. And looking at... See, looking at it from the front, see how it's really kind of dull down here? Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm it up a touch with some additional this lighter green. Okay, let's see how this looks. So you make your adjustments. You know, I'm looking at it all from the back here. I'm building up you know, these different tones in here. And you just have to adjust accordingly. See, that looks better. Now we have kind of more relationship between all the colors that are going on in the forest floor. And I've done it from the back. See this right over here? I don't think this is even going to show up 
but you can just kind of do this right here and have some of it show through a little bit. Again, that photo of mine is uh, smaller, so, but yeah, look at that now. Okay, so let's do something. Let's bring this to life a little bit more. I think that is all we need with the colored pencils. All right, now let's put in some additional colored pencil work in here. All right. I mean, not colored pencil, <laughs> paint pen work. I'm kind of analyzing this from the front here. So let's get in with some of this green. And see, the, yeah, there's some of this foliage now is going to be in front of some of these birch trunks. And now, remember, you know, we're not working from the front back, we're working from the back front. So if I lay down some of these right here, and I add in some more, over the top of it, you know, it's going to be over the top of it where we're working back, it's going to be in the back of it. I'm not going to add too much of this I, the green. I, I really want some of this brighter tone, um, brighter color. So let's go with this kind of canary yellow in here. Okay, we'll kind of focus it more right, right around in here. I'm not putting too much up here because this area is going to be um, kind of cut off. Once I sandwich this with the photo. And then adding some down on the forest floor. Kind of like that. Now let's take a look and see what we're dealing with here. It's hard to see the photo, in fact, through there. But look at that. I think the photo looks pretty good back there, don't you? The higher I go, more of that blue that I use. Uh, the photo goes to about right here, so I'd be losing a lot of this down here. And the sides. But I think that looks pretty good. Now, I have different photos, so, you know, I could still, I could, you know, change up and use a different one, but... I can, you know, I might be able to just put that photo down there, like that. You know, I can't even see where the photo ends back there, like that, right? You know, it ends right in here. I think I can retain that. I don't think it, you know, I can just color that in with some colored pencil. Okay, I think I'm going to do that here. I don't want to lose any of this, I, because it's one of those things I've... I really love 
how this is looking in here. It's amazing. I, I can't see the dimensions of the photo like that, but I think if I put that right there, that'll look really good. And see it down here. It's just, I'll mount that on white. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think it's going to be easier just to spray mount this. This is nice and flat. And I'll take this and I'll just put it right over the top of it and brayer it down like so, okay? Boy, the fact that I don't have to cut any of this off kind of opens up some possibilities as far as placement and everything with it. Okay, so um, let's see. I'll be right back with a sprayed version of this. I'll take a piece of paper with me and I'll put some spray mount. What I'm going to do is spray mount is um, it's like a liquid glue, right? Spray glue, and I'm just going to spray it like that. And I'm going to hand, going to leave it on this piece of paper like this. Okay. All right. This is my spray. Can you see all that spray on there? All that glue that's been sprayed. <laughs> like, this, I don't. I didn't use this very much um, to mount things with. You know the uh, spray adhesive because it's it's kind of a messy thing. It gets. You know, you need to see that goopy thing. It's, it gets in the air. Sometimes if I'm spraying it, if it's windy, I can feel it in the, the hairs of my arm. That's if I'm doing a lot of these. Like, I've, I don't know if I'd want to do, like, 15, like, a bunch of, like, Christmas cards in this, you know, with spray mounting. I guess I could. It makes it really fast, but... Um... All right, I'm going to lay this note like that, but... Um, yeah, it's just kind of a, it's a goopy, well, I wouldn't say goopy, but <laughs> it's just kind of a, it's a messy process. I mean, the last time I, I got these spray cans, I think it was, let's see, it was, um, my can is like probably about, 10 years old or something like that and um, I did I don't know about 20 um, 12 by 18 pieces I mean it was messy okay now one of the things about spray mounting now we're not working with huge pieces here either but you know, when you're laying this down on here, you have to get kind of a, get it nice and smooth. So, um, and you want to do it without bubbles in here. Sometimes you can develop a bubble if you're not kind of braring it, you know, but you can do this. You can just kind of smooth it out, kind of smooth it out from the inside out like this. Okay. Now, especially for something like vellum, you know, which can get a little bit ripply and wavy, especially with all the heat setting. You know, so kind of do, do it from the inside out like that, okay? And I did have a wave in my last piece. Um, like, especially around the birch trunks, but... Um, I don't know. I just see it as, like, dimensional trunks then. Okay, so that's what that looks like here. Okay. See it? My photo is like sandwiched in there. See, it's like you can't even tell that that photo is like where it ends in here. So it's working pretty good. Okay, now I have this, but see this right here? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spray seal, I mean a spray mount, spray this right here, and then I'm going to take this and mount it onto a piece of cardstock, okay? So just a piece of heavy cardstock. This one happens to be a hundred pound, you know, just plain cardstock, and I'll mount it like that. Okay. Yeah, because like the you know the perimeter of my um. You can see how rippled this is right here. So this will just flatten this out really nicely. But look at that photo in there; it looks pretty good. I you know. I guess, I guess the side of this one goes right behind that, maybe. But even like down here, you can't really see it. 
where it ends. This, I mean, this photo isn't like something like nighttime where it's black, you know, it was just a little bit of blues and whites in there, so uh, maybe that's why it, it's so kind of malleable as far as, you know, placement in here. But, okay, so another layer. Okay, you see that glue all over there? I put a pretty thick layer of it on there. You see that right there? See, there's a little bit of overspray on there. So really get your edges really good with that. And this is really sticky. This is a 5x7 piece of uh, vellum here, but just kind of use a whole piece of um, cardstock and just put it right in. Don't try to go for the, you know, the 5x7 piece of cardstock and try to match it up perfectly, okay? Okay, let's take this and put this right over it. And again, kind of work it from the inside out like this, okay? I can feel like a big, heavy ripple right over here, like a wave. Okay. I'll have to develop my shadows a little bit more out to the edge of the paper. I didn't think I would be utilizing the full full five by seven of that uh, of the piece. So you know, I can do my refinements. That yeah, you still feel that heavy ripple right here. Let's see. Using my kind of fingernail as a burnish here. Okay, and now we have a, a piece that's very um, kind of integrated with this piece of cardstock, so um, it makes it easier to handle, you know, that having a nice flat piece of vellum, and it also um, is easy to handle. One thing about this um, spray mount right here is, do you know if you're spraying you know how to do that thing where you turn the can upside down when you're done and spray out all the different contents that are in the tube. With a spray mount you want to do that. You can see it on here where it's really kind of uh, the overspray gets on here. Well it also gets on the nozzle right here so kind of turn it upside down when you're done. Unless you're just going to use it you know like today or tomorrow or something like that again and then spray out all that glue in there and then spray it for a while not, you know, not a ton, but um, it'll get a lot of that um, built-up adhesive, that glue that builds up right there, um, off of there, you know, because you're just blowing, um, you know, canned air out of it. But even so, sometimes there'll be like a little build-up of ink, and you just kind of peel it off like that. So anytime you're about ready to start using this, don't just start spraying it. Kind of spray it off to the side to make sure that it's giving you a good spray, otherwise it might be just like squirting out in like one little stream or something like that because of the buildup of adhesive right here. It does get gunked up though, so just expect that, but I just kind of, you know, I just try to work it off. Okay, so here's our piece right here. Now, now that I have this on here, I'm going to put in my little refine. I wasn't working like way up here. Um, with my paint or my shadows or anything like that, because I didn't, I just didn't think we were gonna be able to utilize it. So, and really glad how that um, sky kind of worked out back there. Now the photo, the photo is very, it's very muted, you know, but it looks pretty natural back there. That blue. And that little bit of cloud, and and, and it, it you know we're looking at it through, um, you know a translucent surface in the vellum, okay. So it is very muted, but it does look like it's integrated pretty well. Okay, now see these areas out here would probably be blue, so I'm just kind of. Filling this, in. you know. This being said, I could have added some blue on the back of the vellum, but I don't. I don't think we need to. Oh, 
I'm saying I could have done that before I spray sealed, but um, yeah, I didn't want to. You know, add another process. I didn't think I'd really have to. Okay, so see this these shadows over here. I'm going to develop it a little bit more um, down here because I, you know, I thought it would be getting cut off way over here. So I'll show you what I do with this. I didn't even know if some of these trees were going to be in the finished piece if I stuck with the dimensions of the photograph. So this, I might bring my shadows out this way a little bit more. Yeah, to the edge of the page. Okay, I have a big ripple right here. Okay. So I'm going to squish, burnish that out just with my fingernail. You can use whatever. You can use a pen or something like that. Okay, now that flattened that out really nicely. It was raised. I should have shown it to you like that. Now sometimes, hey, I do feel like, I don't know, I've had these sitting around a couple days at times, you know, after I spray sealed and burnished and brared, okay, and it still kind of rippled. Don't be too surprised if you get something like that, but hey, you know, we're working in dimensions. It's it's not really visual, visible, you know, where you see this big wave or something like that. It might just be a little area that's kind of raised, but I don't know. It doesn't really bother me from a visual standpoint. It's not really getting in the way of anything. Right. Huh. Let's add a little bit more texture with some green leaves. And then, um, let's see, this is one of the things that I've liked as far as a finishing touch. I've been using my white paint pen, a, a more detailed one, and going into these trunks, I've added the shadows on the right side of the right trees, and the shadows on the left side of the left side trees, okay? Now there's not really strong lighting in here anymore because I've added that kind of that blue photo in the background, but... Um, let's still go in and add a little bit of highlighting on the right side of some of these trees um, with a white pen. So you shade with dark and then we can highlight with light. Kind of break it up though. Don't just go like you know, one straight line. Kind of break it up a little bit just like I was doing with the... Um, the shadows, you know, is keeping it nice and irregular. You don't have to be perfect about it. It actually looks better without it. You can do little contours on your birch trees. I do have a lot of texture on these birch trees in the design, okay? So you're going along with the design. So observe the design. You can see where I've done these little contour lines in here. That's what we learned and, you know, rendering classes and things like that. You have descriptive lines to describe the form of your pieces. So on all of my drawings that I do, I describe the forms and how their shapes are, in addition to creating shadows and light within them too, just to describe you know, the basic um, form of them. Then you describe the textures you know, as well. So all of my designs are kind of layered with about, you know, um, about five different techniques in them to, sh you know, describe the forms in different ways to describe the, uh, the visual weight of them. Textures, shadows. Definitely form has to be kind of a, you know, 
big part of a drawing. If it's an outline, I do like outline designs, but just not for kind of the more three-dimensional types of uh, things. And textures and whatnot are so important with, you know, kind of a visual world. Okay, so, so see these um, kind of highlights on here? See, I'm kind of just scribbling them in here. Like that. Do you see that? How that lighting is kind of a little bit more defined. You just kind of scribble it around. Now, if you do just do like one of these trees this way, it's, it kind of stands out. So when you first start doing this kind of texturing, it kind of it can look kind of odd because it's out of place, right? But then when you put it over as a consistent texture over everything, or a lot of things, it doesn't have to be over everything, it all comes into kind of focus, okay? So you just have to kind of trust the process right there. Or don't get f afraid of, you know, certain things that are starting to develop with one or two marks, okay? It's even for me, you know, even for me, every time I do this, I'm, I drew the designs, but every time I start doing this, you know, I am thinking about that when I get into it. You know, it's like, a lot of times I'm doing little dots, but on something like this, I think it's better to describe the form, so I'm usually not highlighting with little scratchy marks, you know, and things like that, like I do. So I have to get used to it, too. Okay, so adding some little highlights on some of these leaves, so you can add on some highlights on your colored leaves like that. You can do this with, like, a larger meows and two you can have like some white integrated in there uh, i don't know looks like this white one looks pretty good so the, these these pens are so big and huge you know you they're almost like separate forms so you can place highlights on them in a very detailed way with your smaller like this and again it doesn't have to be in like a real specific area see I'm just kind of hitting it around like this kind of cluster it um, change your um, alter your application of it have a couple in some areas and go a little bit heavier in other areas and it just looks a little bit more natural that way Maybe I'll put more of the white little highlights on some of those yellow ones. Maybe the yellow ones are more reflective of light. I don't know. This area over here gets a little bit kind of darkened, but you can go back in and just add a few little highlights in there like that. It just kind of brings it to life. There's some of these branches in here. You can put a little bit of a highlight on them if you want to. You know, some of those black branches. I don't want to outline everything. It's kind of easy to get carried away. And I do recommend you get carried away. <laughs> you know, at least sometimes. That way you can kind of, you know, if you do too much on something, then you kind of know the, uh, the boundaries. But that's always better than kind of holding back all the time, you know. Right? People, people really be bold with their um, applications and... Uh, with their entire process. That way you kind of you maximize something rather than kind of having it never achieve its kind of ideal kind of resolution. Okay. So I have, you know, I have those kind of those black little tiny.
tiny rocks down there. I'm doing the complement of it by adding some little white down there as well. Okay. And I'm not, I don't think I'm, here's what I was talking about. Sometimes I add in a little bit too much fog because it's such a, a fun effect. And last time I was thinking, eh, maybe I went a little bit too far. So maybe I will use a little bit less of this this time. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Okay, where'd my new pack of cotton balls go? I have these ones right here. Just purchased at Target. They're a little bit fuller and denser than my ones that I've been using. You can see they're kind of all funky shapes and stuff like that. They're just not quite as dense. But I do want a fairly dense version of this. So kind of starting off a little bit denser to begin with is a little bit easier. Okay, so this is my Brilliance White. You can use a different type of uh, white pad, your Hero Arts or whatever. Unicorn. Okay, I'm getting a good amount on here. Okay, it starts to fray a little bit, so you can just kind of push it down a little bit. <laughs> like, well, like so. You kind of want to get a little bit of that paint kind of built into the first layer. You don't need a ton of it, but okay, this one's really fraying. <laughs> okay, there we go. See, it's nice and flat, okay? And you just kind of start lightly dabbing in there. It's where you can barely see it, okay? So, if, But from a dimensional standpoint, I just really love the look of this. See, like that deer, it's like standing in a little bit of fog. It's light, too, so it's like you're being able to add lighting into the scene. But it just makes perfect, it goes so well with um, scenes, because, you know, you get this type of look out in nature. And if you look, it's not necessarily that we see it in nature. Um, like, if you look at any movie, you know, anytime they're in a forest, there's all this fog. They just use fog machines up the wazoo. Okay? Even if it's the daytime. So watch that when you're watching, like, a TV show. It just makes the, the whole set a little bit more illuminated, and the backgrounds seem a little bit more um, kind of interesting when you have that going on. So any scene with fog in it, that's fog machines. It's not It's not nature. It, some of it might be nature, but usually not. It's almost 100% fog machines. Now, these areas right over here, off to the side, what I might do is I might put some of this white over it to make it look like it's kind of illuminated a little bit more. See, I didn't, you know, that blue isn't over here with the sky, but what I can do is, if you know, if I put some of this white over there, it could represent, maybe there was like some big cloud structures, you know, around in this area. So it kind of integrates it a little bit more, even though it doesn't really need to. I think it integrates pretty well just as is. And there's that cloud kind of in the background of the photo, but I can kind of enhance that a little bit more, you know, with some pigment ink if I want to. Okay, I'm going to punch some of these areas just a touch more, because when this pigment ink dries, it kind of dries um, a little bit more transparent than what it was when it was freshly applied. So it gets darker, you know, so if I want it to stand out a little bit more, I'll just apply a little bit more of it down here.
right, I think that should do it now. That over here a little bit. You notice whenever I do this, whenever I ink up on here and just go straight on here, there's not some kind of big blob of paint. It's, my pad is fairly dry, okay? But if you just picked up one of these pads, or you just don't use it very much, you're going to have a ton of ink in there, so, you know, lightly dab, and then blot off quite a bit before you start utilizing it, okay? If anyone ever has a hard time doing this technique right here, it's because they're using who knows, 10 times as much ink as what you should have on here, okay? We're representing kind of mist and fog, but we're not trying to get it in one tap. You're building it up through 20 taps or something like that. So you have 20 times less than what you will want in terms of the end effect, okay, which is very light, okay? So it means that that's the way it should look after 20 taps. So you want, like, 50 times drier than that. See that ledge when I go over here? You can't even see anything, right? So I just kind of stay down there. And it just starts to build up very slowly. Now, you know, sometimes, you know, for me, I'm working with a very dry pad, so, um, you know, I have to keep re-inking a lot more, you know, like that, okay? But, like I said, get a feel for your pad. A lot of times people don't use white pigment ink very often, so your pads are super juicy, okay? Um, so just kind of utilize accordingly. All right, so I think that should do it here. Um, oh, <laughs> I should format this into a card, so let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an X-Acto blade and a straight edge. Oh, here's what I like to do too. A lot of times I like to leave a little bit of a border around my pieces, like white, okay? So what I'll do is when I cut this out, when I trim this, I just do it by eyeball. And I'll leave a thin little amount of it. See a little thin border right there? Now some of you, you know, you might not be comfortable with that. Now see, I'm just going with a very light pass, okay? I don't know how many times this will take. But I can get a very crisp line just by utilizing a very light trim. Okay, now you see, I don't know if you can see that trim right there. See that little border around it? The scene? And I'll try to keep it consistent, but... You know, I'm not terribly worried about it um, if I'm a little bit off, okay? But here, when you start doing this, though, like this, keep with a very light touch, okay? If you try to get in one, sometimes it goes a little bit off, okay? So it just you get a much straighter cut um, with multiple passes, just very light multiple passes, okay? All right. This. I should really spray mount this whole scene onto uh, some of their cardstock. I think I'm done with the spray sealing for today, though. That was uh, twice? Yeah, I, can, I don't know. Maybe I would do it. But I already did kind of spray out my glue, you know, with that upside down you know, trick. Okay, so there we go there. And let's look at some different colors that we can do on here. Orange is way too extreme. One of the colors that I liked doing the other day was, um, see, I think that looks really great in the, uh, the starter in gold like that. No, we can go, you know, much bolder. something like, you know, some kind of black. Boy, that, really, that is really strong in black like that. Um, I 
Here's a star dream. Blue. Huh. That looks really good. That really brings out that blue, doesn't it? And see, I have that built-in little border in there. It's very thin. Show you what this looks like over white like that okay my gut feeling is telling me the uh the starting blue like that well this this gold certainly makes for a, a grand presentation that blue stands out pretty good with that though too doesn't it okay i'm going with the blue um, a lot of you might be saying, oh, I like the gold better, but I just did a gold too. So for me, this is just kind of a change of pace too. All right. This is fairly large right here. So I am going to spray mount it. It just, I spray it in the back and I place it down and it just set, you know what I mean? I don't have to do it like tape gun and all that. And plus it'll be nice and flush and flat like that. So, all right, one more spray. Mounting spray, and this should be all set. <laughs> oh, as I touch this right here, I'm touching a lot of this. This is getting um, some of that um, white paint, which is still wet on my fingertips here. So um, that's happening. It dries fairly fast, so I'm not going to bother with uh, um, spray sealing, I don't think, right now. Okay, so one more uh, stuff. All right. The spray came out of my spray and also really smooth or fine and even, you know, with that, um, uh, whatever you call it, nozzle <laughs> clearing that I did the previous time. Okay, I'm just eyeballing this again here. Okay. Ooh, I got a little strand of adhesive there. That's where that glue gets a little bit messy. Let's see if I can kind of, yeah, that's wiping off. That's scraping off just fine. There's a little bit, it's like a spider web of, you know, glue over here. Okay, now I put a little bit more glue on this one because it is, it's really stiff at this point in time. Sometimes I don't want a big globs of glue in between, say, the vellum and the photograph or the vellum and whatever I'm doing. I usually want it, you know, pretty even. But on this one, I really kind of slathered it. Just because it is, you know, nice and firm and established. And this is kind of my last mounting here of it. Okay, I think that looks pretty decent. Um, in terms of the framing of this goes, huh, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know, do I, let's see, do I just eyeball this this time? It's like this. The star dream's not too thick. It's kind of a text weight star dream. It's pretty thin, so you don't have to do too many passes. Okay, let's take a look and see how this goes here. I think that was a really fun scene to do. Um, I don't know. There were certain things that kind of revealed themselves to me out of the fact that, meaning that photograph is like right in here, you know, but it didn't matter. I don't know. Um, I guess it's specific with the vellum and all the different layers that we put in there, but also, you know, this cloud formation thing, you know, just this kind of general, you know, textural background that was in there. It didn't matter that some areas were completely white, you know, around here, you know, but that photograph looks pretty good in here. You know, there's some subtleties in here. I mean, it, could you do that, you know, by yourself, you know, toning in, 
you could it would just look different i think this kind of this softer types of uh you know transitional forms you know with photographs i don't know i think it looks really good i mean it's really subtle in the background but i think it it's pairing really well with the stamped forms in here just as kind of a textural contrast so photographs you know i think look really good and again this is you know this is a big thing this took you know a little while to do your normal card is going to be half this size so it's going to go much faster i just like to do kind of larger pieces when i'm doing my experiments so i can have more room to employ whatever techniques that i'm going to be doing and then i usually come you know back with a here's a, a quick card version of this piece like this which would be half the size and we can come up with something you know it, the composition will be different but we can do something really similar so um yeah and you know it's going to be half the dots used in here half the colored pencil half everything um, in a standard card size so you know fairly large size right here the end result on this one's you know eight and a half by uh, about six and a half roughly you know when when all said and done with the you know the overall piece but um i don't know i'm really happy with the um with the the photo um in the background like that and even how you know the colored pencil used down here a lot of it was white because a lot of this was cloud down here but the white you know there's some areas that are blue that blue within here but by the time you add in that colored pencil on the front of this and the photograph in the background is subdued due to the translucent nature of the material vellum put on top of it you know down here it doesn't really matter so again seems to be a pretty um you know good material to use and look how dimensional that is i think it's pretty dimensional in terms of space in here so um, really fun stuff all right, so if you've sat through this, bear it with me in terms of another kind of experiment here and stay till the end. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you utilize these techniques right here. A lot of times people have some vellums or something like that sitting around, like I did. This vellum of mine is probably 20 years old or something like that, and just getting around to using it. But for something like this, Oh my gosh, it really opens up some doors as far as the possibilities go in terms of your process and the end result in terms of how things look. So um, just a lot of fun to do. If you're doing like birch trees like this, I would recommend a bottle of this type of thing too. Um, you know, your bleed proof white. One bottle goes a long ways too. You can sit on something like this and use it a lot for splatter painting snow or something like that in your snowy scenes or stars and whatnot. And uh, I don't know, for something like this, it's really fun to employ. Okay, so thanks again.